Hello friends, welcome to my channel, Connected Topics in Physics. Today, we will discuss about generalized coordinate system. So, we will understand from this video what is generalized coordinate, significance or importance of generalized coordinate, examples of generalized coordinate. So, we all are familiar with Cartesian coordinate system in three dimensions. So, if you want to specify a three particles positions, then we need three different coordinate. Those are x, y, and z, and they are mutually independent. That means for a particle p to specify its position, we need three coordinate x, y, and z. And if we use another coordinate system, for example, spherical polar coordinate system or cylindrical coordinate system, then also you need three different coordinate. So, in this case also, we need three coordinate system. Three coordinate, those are x, y and z. And if we move to a Cartesian coordinate system in two dimensional, then we, that means we already apply a constraint on the particle's movement that it can move only a plane. Say, for example, in this case, x, y plane. So, that's why in x, y plane, to specify a particle's movement, that is for particle P, we need only two coordinate that is X and Y. So here in this case, the number of coordinates required equal to three minus one. Here one is the number of constraint. So number of coordinate requires are two. And if we move to even lower than the 2D system, that means the 1D systems. So here, uh, that means we apply one more that means total two constraint on the particles movement that it can move only one direction say x direction so hence the number of coordinates required to specify the particles motion is only one that is in x as it is in x direction if we specify the particle direction in y direction then it will be the y so here the number of coordinate required to specify the particles movement equal to 3 minus number of constraint here the number of constraints are 2 so hence the number of coordinates required equal to 1 so here the concept come the generalized coordinate so the definition of generalized coordinate is the set of independent coordinate required to specify completely the state of a system is called generalized coordinates so we are denoting the generalized coordinate u i and if there are more than one generalized coordinate then we can specify or we can denote them as q1 q2 q3 like that so there is one more important thing so this generalized coordinate not only the x y and z so it can be length it can be angle or energy but the one condition is they should completely describe the state of a system so that is the one condition so in general if there are in particle in 3d in three dimension and the number of constraints are m so the number of generalized coordinates are specified by this equation that is n equal to 3 into n minus m so now we will discuss about significance of generalized coordinates so the main importance of generalized coordinates are it they are the num minimum number of independent coordinates that define the configuration of a system which simplifies the formulation of Lagrange equation of motion that means if we want to know the equation of motion of a particle then if we use Newtonian method so it will it may difficult one can feel difficult using Newtonian method so and if we want to if we use Lagrange equation of motion it will be easier so that Lagrange equation of motion to use this Lagrange equation of motion we need to use the generalized coordinate and one more importance for using the generalized coordinate is so if someone choose the constant the generalized coordinate perpendicular to the constant corresponding constant force so what will happen so the constant force does no work for motion along that generalized coordinate so it will be easier 
to calculate the equation of motion of that particle. So now we will discuss about few examples of generalized coordinate. So consider for a simple pendulum. So in the this is the diagram of a simple pendulum and this the angle is theta and this for example particles mass is m and the length of the pendulum is l. So here only one constant is there that is x square plus y square equal to l square where l is the length of the pendulum. So uh, where we consider this arc length is a straight line. So in this case for the simple pendulum the number of generalized coordinate is 1. Why? Because it is in two dimensions that this bob is moving in two dimensional and the constant is 1. So 2 minus 1 equal to 1 and hence the number of code generalized coordinate is 1. Here it is theta. Consider another example for a double pendulum. So this is the uh, picture of a double pendulum. Here there are two mass that is m1 and m2. So the position of m1 equal to x1 and y1 and the position of mass m2 is x2 and y2 and, and the mass m1 the angle from the y axis is theta 1 for mass 2 the angle is theta 2. So here the constants are x square plus y square equal to l1 square for the first pendulum and for the second pendulum also it will be same but the equation of length is different that is x2 minus x1 square plus y2 minus y1 square equal to l square. So here in this case the number of constants are 2 and hence the number of generalized coordinates are 2 into 2 minus 2 equal to 2 here that uh, earlier we used 3n so here the dimension is 2 so that is why 2 and the number of particles are 2 so that is why 2 into 2 and minus 2 this 2 is because for there are two constant and so the number of coordinates generalized coordinates are 2 so hence those are theta 1 and theta 2 so that's how we can understand about generalized coordinate so first we have to find how many constants are there and then accordingly we can calculate the number of generalized coordinate so one thing we have to keep in mind that they should be completely specify the state of the system so that is the one condition so thank you for watching